beautiful collective welcome back to the channel guys thank you so much for joining me here collective let's get you some reading here collective thank you so much for your generosity your likes your comments and your subscriptions collective energy what the ego okay collective Someone acting like an adolescent. Acting, you know, immature here. It's like... A great heart will not be denied. You know, you would rather be lonely than be treated like you are, uh, you know dealing with somebody who is too immature to appreciate you i'm sorry you would rather be alone this person is sitting here like in a state of inertia you know you want something electric you want somebody who you know makes you feel alive who wants it, to be with you, you would rather be alone than settle for an immature fool. Well, you know, this person could have been going through a midlife crisis. Hang on, guys, I gotta let Tucker out. Sorry about that. When he when he has to go, he's gotta go. He'll probably bark to come in too. So this person was acting immature. They could have been going through a midlife crisis, okay? And it's like this person, I don't know, they just, it's crazy energy. Now this person is feeling like they sacrificed you and they want to communicate with you. They could not see the forest through the trees and now this person is going through a self-realization. They missed the boat. It's almost like this person, they couldn't see the forest through the trees. They could have been going, like I said, through a midlife crisis, thinking this was all going to be fun, that... I don't know what they're expecting, but now they're going through a self-realization. You know, if I know then, if I knew then what I know now, I never would have done this. If I knew then what I knew now, I never would have done this. I would have communicated, I would have reached out, I would have tried to work this out. Uh, this person is realizing they sacrificed the very thing that was bringing them in transformation, change, prosperity, stability, and now they're like... If I only, if I knew then what I know now, I never would have done this. That's what they're saying. It's a self-realization. They sacrificed you for a midlife fling crisis. Hang on. That was the boss. <laughs> Want back in. So this person couldn't see the forest through the trees. They didn't. They were just acting immature. They were acting like maybe they were like feeling like this would make them feel alive again. Maybe this would make them feel, uh, you know, like a kid again. And quite honestly, now the reality is setting in. They sacrificed the very thing that would have brought them. This is electricity. This is magnetism. This is enduring. This is like, if I only knew, 
then would I know now. Oh, see? No movement. Like, Knight of Pentacles upright is slow movement. This person was at a dead halt. I mean, they thought that by ending things with you and sacrificing you, that's the judgment they made. They made the wrong choice. That's what they're saying. If I only knew then what I know now, I never would have made this judgment call. I never would have sacrificed this love. I never would have hurt this relationship. They hurt themselves when they hurt you. By them sneaking around, it's only brought them nothing but a burden. Their decision has burdened them. You know, like I said, adolescence. This person figured, you know, they were happy with you. They were patient with you. They want to communicate with you. They were in their pride and their ego. But now this is the realization, you know. Thought the grass was greener, and all it's done is bring them in the ten of swords. Because they had everything that they wanted in you, but they were immature, they were out, you know, listening to other people. Like, I mean, come on. The devil, temptation. This person thought that, you know, stroking their ego, you know, this is, you know, somebody chasing me. They went chasing after the devil. And now they're angry because... Things ended with you, and now they feel embarrassed and feel like a fool. If Self-realization. As painful as this is, this person did not willingly want to do what they wanted, what they did. They might have thought, you know, this could be exciting. This could, you know, make me feel alive again, or, you know seven year itch or whatever the heck it was that went through their head and then it's like now I've really made a jackass of myself now I really feel like a fool now I feel all embarrassed now I am in regret now I'm in remorse they sacrificed the union that they did want for a I don't know a fling a one night stand midlife crisis Put it off as it is. They're depressed and they're regretting it. It's a self-realization. If I only knew then what I know now. That's what they're saying. If I only knew then when I'd, what I know now. I never would have sacrificed this relationship. I had everything that I wanted right here. Happiness, stability, someone dedicated, someone grounded someone that made me feel happy who was committed who was they love you this person is still holding on to you they're feeling defeated in this relationship maybe they tried to make you jealous maybe they figured you'd get jealous and chase them I, I don't know. They were like acting all smug and arrogant, you know, you know, all prideful and boastful. And they hurt you, but actually they hurt themselves. 
Because now they feel trapped. Maybe they were comparing themselves to other people they worked with. Maybe they were comparing themselves to other people in their family. Maybe they were trying to like brag or to other people at work or brag to other people in their family. I don't know. But they sacrificed the very best thing that they could have had. The Ten of Pentacles, stability. This their actions. What are you going to do? You had no choice but to walk away. And this person is sorry. You know. They were selfish. I think this person was going through a midlife crisis. You know, competing with their friends, competing with their buddies. Um, something to do with, um, you know, messages and pictures and videos. You know how a lot of people at work brag about who they were on a date with, who they hooked up with, who they, they were flashing, um, what they were doing around. Somebody was flashing around what they were doing. They were copycatting other other energies, you know. Um, here, let me show you what I got. Let me show you who I was with last night. Let me show you, you know. And um, they started competing with other people. They were insecure in themselves. That's what caused them this stagnant energy. They had something to prove. But they were only fooling themselves. That's the truth. They were feeling like a victim, feeling like, you know, they would be left out in the crowd that you know, they're getting older, all the other guys are bragging about who they had and what they were doing, and a lot of that is phony. You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm, a lot of that is phony because it's like they could have been contacting people through like, websites or you know the guys saying look who I've been looking at look at who I'm dating look at who I'm dealing with but they got some hang up and your instincts knew it told you they, this person loved you. They did. I told you, people at work. People that they were talking to at work. Now, don't get me wrong. This person loved you and was proud of you, too. But, you know... It's like they were competing with other people. Like I said, other people, like these could be date sites and people showing them pictures of other people that they were dating, who they were going out with. Hey, I met somebody on Instagram. I met, I met somebody on TikTok. I met somebody on a website. Look who I'm dating. Look who I'm dating. It was like egging this person on to do what they did. And I'm not um, making excuses for your person. Like, they saw you as the Empress. They still do. It's just that these people wanted to be popular. They wanted to go with the crowd. They the, Whoever their crowd was. 
and it's showing a lot of work-related people. So whoever their crowd at work is, was they were braggarts. It's the group of guys that they were associating with or the group of girls that they were associating with. It's like, look who I'm dating. Look, oh, I got this one. I got this one. Well, half that shit's Photoshop. Like, but I, they were egging this person on to do what they did. You are the star. You are the empress. Now, this this is a crisis. This is like, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have done what I did. Because whatever this person did do, they regret doing. The reality sets in. So if they started dating somebody else, or they started... Um, meeting other people. It was to brag to their friends. So that they could go, well, yeah, look who I got. I'm better than you. I can get, they got in their pride, their ego. They were at bragging rights here. They wanted bragging rights. They had every reason to brag about you, but you are too respectful to do some of the shit that uh, some of these other ones were willing to do. <laughs> Just saying. Like, you never would have allowed this person to do... Uh, <laughs> you're too respectful. You got too much self-respect. Like, I'm not trying to put down, like, only fans or stuff like that, but that's what they were into. Their buddies were into that. Their buddies were into like model, Instagram models, or Onlys fans, or it twisted their perception of what a relationship should be, twisted their perception about what it was to have somebody committed, loyal, dedicated, um, you also are a star. You also are very attractive. You also are very beautiful or handsome. Take it as it resonates. But this person, it's what their buddies were doing. It is. It's what their buddies were doing. Their buddies could have been single. Their buddies could have been cheating married uh, women or men. It doesn't matter. They wanted bragging rights. They wanted to be fit in the crowd. They wanted to do what everybody else was doing, only to have sacrificed the very thing that would have made them happy. You. I never understood that, eh? Like, I never did. I've known people to do this. Like, seriously, I have. I've known quite, well, only because I worked in an environment where I got to hear all the guys talking and the girls talking. And you would be surprised how many people do this. Now, they've got a prize sitting at home, like a prize possession. I swear to God. And they want those bragging rights. I They got something to prove. That means that a person is not secure in their own selves. That means that a person is not secure with themselves to be like that. Because like a secure person, whether you're a feminine or whether you're a masculine, doesn't need that. They don't need bragging rights. They have something to brag about. Do you know what I mean? And now the older I get, the more I know. <laughs> you don't want to brag about what you have at home because you know everybody and their dog's going to be after it. Just saying. So, you know, what do they say about that? You know, you got the secure thing at home. And then you want the fling thing on the side here to, like, boost your ego. 
But when they really lose that one at home, their solid core, their rock, their foundation, and they are just in the dating world, it's not as good as what everybody makes it sound it is. Like, seriously, it's not all cracked up to be what everybody thinks it is. You got a sure thing at home, and then you want to see what else is out there. You are the one who's insecure, not the one sitting at home here being dedicated and loyal. Because this is hard to come by. This kind of energy is extremely hard to come by. Because <laughs> all those dating world people, they all date people. They are all, they're all in it for their ego. In they sacrificed a sure thing. A bona fide sure thing. For a I don't know what. But now they've got that realization, you know? Too little, too late, you know? See, the funny thing about those buddies are... <laughs> come on now. I hear it all the time. When I worked, like, guys, I was in an industry where... I worked with a lot of people, like large, large groups. And you hear how they brag. You hear what they say. You hear them talk about their wives. You hear them talk about their girlfriends. You hear them or vice versa. This is, the girls are doing it too. They're doing it with somebody. But when their lives fall apart, you just sit quietly and you don't say a word and then you watch their lives fall apart. Then you get a real bird's eye view of what it was like when their lives fall apart. When they don't have that safety net. When they're just another fish in the sea. Like, oh my God, what have I done? Well, what this one has done is ruined their life. And then that other person that they go to, now... They want to hook up. Now they want to get married. Now they want to have the house and the cars and the, live the life that The Rock was living. You know what I'm saying? So they're starting all over again. They got to do it all over again. It is midlife crisis. And it's dealing with people they work with. That's that bullshit. You know what I mean? All the people getting together. Oh yeah, my old lady, my old man. I go out, I cheat, I met so-and-so, I met an OnlyFans fan, I met this, you know what I'm saying, I'm not knocking OnlyFans fans or anything, but it's a facade. It's a facade. Everybody puts their best foot forward. Everybody tries to look the best that they can look in videos and in person and, you know, but the reality sets in because 
Nobody wants to just sit there and be treated like a third wheel. No, they want the prize that the one at home has. You know what I'm saying? So then they sacrifice the one at home to go have this, and then they got to build that whole life with that person. And then it's like, <laughs> then the reality sets in. Well, who the hell are they? You know, I mean, I just went for the pod. But who are they as a person? Who are they as an individual? Now I'm stuck with uh, a wife and three kids that I didn't want to have. You know what I'm saying? Self-realization. I fucked up. It was in my imagination. You know what I'm saying? Imagining how passionate it's going to be. It's going to be passionate. Well, till reality sets in with Saturn and Pluto come in and they go, yeah, I was passionate, but now reality sets in. You got to make a home. You got to build a life. That's going to cost you a lot of money. That's going to cost you a lot of time. That's going to, you know, the honeymoon stage wears off. You know, the, you know, the little hot clothes that they wear, they start wearing, you know, sweatpants, right? It, it's a facade. God. It is. Because people are people. That's the reality of it. I mean, everybody puts their best self forward when they're trying to meet somebody. I watched it. I seen it. And then all those same guys who were doing that and same women who were doing that, then you get to see the aftermath. The tears, the crying, the divorce, the fees, the the new family that got in, they got involved with. Now they got new in-laws and new problems. You just exchange one set of issues for another. That's all you do. And they're realizing it. Take care. <laughs>